There is change of foot within the Dark Angels chapter, and no, we are not referring to the monumental return of the lion, nor the fact fallen Astartes are being re-inducted into the Dark Angels by their primogenitor and primarch. No, very recently, the many condemning secrets of which the first protect so doggedly, almost became known to the arch enemy. But as if all this isn't horrifying enough, one Dark Angel Primaris, a company captain no less, has begun to publicly question his chapter's practice of prioritising the pursuit of fallen Astartes over the Imperium's wider well-being. Is one of the Lion's sons having doubts? You be the judge. But first you need to know this lore is extracted directly from the new 10th edition Dark Angels Codex, as well as the newly released Black Library novel, Lazarus, Enmity's Edge. As such, this video does contain spoilers. You have been warned. Now we're not going to provide a blow by blow of the recent Lazarus novel, instead we're going to draw attention to the very concerning scenario this novel raises, and it's one that could actually be brought about several ways. Following this we'll dive into some of the changes brought about by the newest Dark Angels Codex, so we're all on the same page about where exactly the Dark Angels story arc currently sits in the galaxy's grand plan. Just quickly, please make sure you interact with these videos by either subbing, liking, hitting the notification bell, sharing, or all of the above. This makes YouTube's ruthless algorithm pay attention, pushing our content out to be discovered by even more 40k lore enthusiasts. And I'm even conducting a 30 hour no sleep painting challenge in the next few days, in which I aim to paint a full 2000 point army in just 30 hours. I'll be live on our Discord during a lot of this, so if you'd like to pop on by and speak to my dreary self, join the Titan Wargaming Discord via the link in the description. If you can't make it fear not, my no doubt tired efforts will be made into a video in the coming weeks. Welcome viewer to Dark Angel's fifth company captain, Lazarus. An Astartes reborn, having crossed the Rubicon Primaris following a scorching, unnatural death at the hands of Chaos Sorcery, Captain Lazarus is not one to suffer the mutant or the psyker. Firstly, what you must know about Lazarus is that he has been front and centre in the most high profile battles the Dark Angels have been involved with around and since the forming of the Cicatrix Maledictum. Not only was the Master of the Fifth a supreme strategist compared to any other Astartes, present and working alongside the Grey Knights during their lightning strike against Magnus on his planet of the Sorcerers, but he also fought beside Chapter Master Azrael himself to defend the rock's inner sanctum from Vashtor the Archifane. Lazarus' contempt for the demonic as well as the sorcerer serving to fuel his hatred during these particularly demanding battles. Lazarus is also a member of the Inner Circle his membership within the notoriously secretive council bestowing upon the Master of the Fifth a particularly curious role. Called the Keeper of the Unseen Ritual, it is Lazarus' task to decipher the ancient texts of Caliban, those of the Knights themselves, in order to ensure there are present within them no retellings detailing the Dark Angel's fall to chaos. A task, it must be said, is well suited to the Captain's, at times, overactive desire to learn. However, more recently, mankind's severe plight has impressed upon Lazarus that their premier defenders, the Lion's Sons, need to be ever more proactive against the galaxy's greater evils, rather than the Inner Circle's priorities of pursuing fallen Dark Angels before anything else. Of course, you can imagine how an opinion such as this would be received when voiced to Chapter Master Azrael himself, but Lazarus would never do so without good reason. You see, during a recent campaign to defend the people of Husk, a particularly ugly, toxic world, against a blood-maddened orc war, Lazarus, 5th Company, was abandoned by their own battle barge, Unrelenting Fury. Shocking enough, but this was in the heat of battle, with the barge's fire support being depended upon to thin a massive orc war prior to the Greenskins ploughing into Lazarus' lines. But why would this occur? Battle Brothers do not abandon one another like this. Well, it was on Azrael's personal command. The Supreme Grand Master knowing full well the risks involved, that Lazarus V was taking part in an active war zone. This action, as you can probably guess, led to greater casualties among the V than would have otherwise been incurred. 
Suddenly, with an overwhelming force visibly bearing down upon their entrenched position, the Dark Angel's 5th Company were in an instant reduced by half their strength, their battle plan requiring urgent readjustment. Casualties were unavoidable, with the Orcs defeated at great cost. Scout Squad Dural knowingly sold their lives by order of Lazarus simply to buy time for their brothers. Lieutenant Ahmed himself was struck down, consumed in green sorcerous fire by an orc weird boy. An ancient respected dreadnought was struck down, weeks worth of repairs required before the venerable warrior was once more capable of reaping destruction on behalf of his vaunted chapter. All these and another four squads killed or injured in this most recent battle. The fifth suffered greatly, a risk come reality that chapter master Azrael fully accepted. Of course, though Lazarus is no raw initiate, emotional as he is at such abrupt unconcern, he knows full well that an Astarte's duty is to fall in battle if that is the Emperor's will. But, and there is quite the caveat to this statement, it is the measure of why a brother dies that matters. What has this expertly gene-crafted loyal son of the Emperor truly perished for? You see, there is a matter that irks Lazarus, and it has led more Dark Angels to premature ends than he cares to dwell upon. Deeply ingrained within the upper echelons of the Dark Angels chapter, it is a practice that takes precedence above all else. Even immediate threats that could lead to the deaths of loyal battle brothers. And that is, the Unforgiven's hunt for the Fallen. Captain Lazarus is a member of the Inner Circle. He is one of a select few who bear a portion of the truth in regards to an ancient betrayal committed by the First Legion at the closing of the Horus Heresy, some ten millennia prior. All present upon Caliban, innocent or no, were labelled traitor, forever branded fallen, and it has been the Dark Angels, as well as their successor chapters, main priority to hunt every last one of those marines. But maybe Azrael cannot see Caliban's forest forest trees, the galaxy has been split in two by the very force which did once cripple the Emperor of Mankind itself, the most powerful mortal ever to draw breath. As Lazarus makes known to his master, the Dark Angels are humanity's greatest hope. They are the first among equals, and if now is not the time to prioritise the defence of the Imperium above all else, then there never will be another. It is the righteous captain's opinion that the Unforgiven must prioritise the defence of mankind's realm above all else, even the hunt for the fallen. To say that Azrael is shocked or disgusted would be a vast understatement. The chapter master even voices doubts as to whether he should have allowed Lazarus' colleagues to conduct the Primaris rites upon his prone dying form those years prior. He believed he saw something in Lazarus then, but now he cannot condone these opinions. But as we know guys, this could all be about to change anyway, which we'll get to a little bit later. It's following this heated conversation between two angels that Lazarus V, still not recovered from their deployment upon Husk, is by direct command of Azrael, ordered to the night world of Rhys. Here Lazarus, along with a stalwart few of his company, uncover the true harm which secrets and lies between Imperial organisations has upon the wider Imperium. In this particular case, relations had completely dissolved between the planet's Mechanicum, who dwelt on the planet's northern continent, versus the Nighthouse of Halvan, who ruled the southern, only due to an ancient war and lack of trust between these two institutions, the noble Nighthouse of Halvan wielded no functional knights of any type. Through the utilisation of grey mould local only to this backwater planet, innocent beings were infected before becoming subsumed by a wider, pernicious consciousness, this once loyal being not only controlling the will of those it infected with what is referred to as the grey motley, but also becoming privy to all of their knowledge, including their darkest secrets. And so when several dark angels are infected by this consciousness, one of which is an ancient banner bearer and also a member of the inner circle, you can no doubt understand the levity of this scenario. Or a sprawling, vengeful consciousness, wielding power over thousands of mortal slaves to wield this information and broadcast it, or worse, flee the planet, 
the Dark Angel's worst fears would be realised and their closely guarded secret, that of their ancestors' heresy, would run the risk of being shared with the wider galaxy. The implications no doubt would be condemning for the first, worthy of extermination in the extreme. But through the martyrdom of some, including the apothecary who oversaw Lazarus' own crossing of the Rubicon, this infection was halted. This raises many questions however, plus a vast amount of conjecture. Though the time frame for this story is put into stark perspective, when Lazarus V is called back to the rock, an astropathic message dispatched on behalf of Supreme Grandmaster Azrael himself, declaring the lion had bid all his sons return home, with great haste. Before we dive into our next new lore, that from the Dark Angels Codex, we need to quickly point out a couple of musings from this novel. Lazarus, along with his companions, especially those belonging to the inner circle, are gravely concerned once they realise that this creature becomes aware of its victim's knowledge. What's strange is that throughout the 10 millennia preceding the betrayal on Caliban, this issue has never been documented within any other law be they Dark Angel or Unforgiven successor, it surely isn't solely Dark Angels interrogating Fallen. No doubt many of the Lion's bloodline have been captured and tortured, whether by conventional means or through dark sorcery. Though never has anybody discovered history's cover-up concerning the Fallen. There have been occasional short stories where Imperial officials such as Inquisition agents discover the truth through their investigations, or witness something they should not, only for an unfortunate accident to occur when in proximity of the first, or for said party to simply vanish. And secondly, this new storyline concerning Lazarus, a senior dark angel with more compassion for baseline humans than most of his kind, let alone the pragmatic sons of the first. Well, it may actually work in tandem with the returned lion's new philosophies. The Lion L. Johnson we witnessed during the Arcs of Omen, or in his newest novel, Lion Son of the Forest, is a stark contrast to the ruthless, almost oppressive personality he possesses during the Heresy series. Do you believe this more contemporary Lion will mesh well with Lazarus? The two perhaps collectively attempting a change of perspective throughout the Unforgiven chapters? And if they did, would this dilute what is considered by many to be the most grim dark space marine chapter in existence? Voice your opinion in the comments so we can discuss that one. While the Lion has reunited with his chapter, he begins to interfere with practices sacred to his sons. Fallen are removed from the tender care of interrogated chaplains by their Primarch personally. Some of these Fallen never returning to their cells. Upon the field of battle, secretive individuals known only as Inner Circle Companions are dispatched by the Lion to protect senior figures within the Unforgiven's ranks. And though nowhere is it explicitly stated, we know very likely these are members of the Risen. Dark Angel Fallen who have repented or been apologised to by the Lion and bid welcome back to their Legion come chapter. I'll point out a rather contentious portion of new lore from the Codex, and that is that the Deathwing form the outermost membership of those belonging to the Inner Circle. This one's already caused some confusion on our community page during our weekly Tuesday trivia poll, and like it or not, it's in the Codex. This particular lore I personally believe was really just unrequired. We've even seen fairly new recruits in the form of Primaris actually be inducted into the Inner Circle, obviously bypassing any specialist promotions in between. So this about turn is strange, and assigns a more formal process upon the Dark Angel's secrets that honestly, their plot is better off without. In my opinion anyway. What do you think? Now whilst the winds of change flow around the loyalist Dark Angels, we really need to bear a thought on what transpires elsewhere in the galaxy regarding those Dark Angels who flock to Luther's side. We know the Lion's erstwhile mentor is likely quite insane, so does this mean we'll never truly witness discourse between Luther and the Lion regarding the events which took place on Caliban? Or in his foster son's presence, will the fog hanging over Luther's mind be lifted, revealing a mentally frail, remorseful mortal? It's hard to tell without knowing more of what he's up to right now, but considering more esteemed evil players of the great games such as the Changeling, Bellicor, or Vashtor have also had dealings with the Rock, 
choices may be made for Luthor that he is not in a position to counter. I'm keen to learn more of the true traitorous fallen story. Even the wildcard Cypher has been mentioned recently in a novel all to himself no less. You can find this one linked in the comments if you're interested. Various points towards the end of part 2 bear particular interest for any 40k fan, so I won't spoil that for you here. Remember this, this and this if you'd like to be part of our community as we grow and support the channel. I'd like to say a massive thank you to our Warlord Titan Patreon Nelson, bloody legend mate. Thank you for your support. These are our Patreon perks if you're keen to support the channel guys. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this new Dark Angels lore and where they might be headed in the future. Until next time, take it easy and have a good one.